Hey and welcome guys. Uh, today what we have is an alien model. Uh, this is from AMT Ertl. Uh, I believe the copyright on this box was 1990, so another older model kit. It's a plastic kit. Uh, I've done a couple of vinyl kits lately, so it's kind of nice return to plastic, which I'm far more familiar with. To me it's uh, a little bit easier to, to work with. Uh, let's, let's take a look. It's a fairly simple uh, display. Uh, a few runners here, parts, looks like the body is basically two parts and the head. Uh, we do have a clear part for the top of the head, so that's uh, nice and makes a nice little detail. I believe there is um, some uh, detail on top of the head that will come through the uh, part, so uh, we'll have, some, have to do something with that. Real quick look at the uh, instructions here, pretty simple. Uh, it's like there's basically just four parts uh, putting stuff together. Uh, the big challenge, I guess, is going to be the seam lines because you know, obviously the body's in two parts, arms, legs are all uh, multiple parts, and we'll have seams that come through there. So that'll be the biggest part of it. Now, this kit does not include a display stand, so I'd like to make a display stand for them, something kind of alien looking, something along that nature. So let's just get started and putting them together. So just working on assembly here, uh, obviously we're going to have a lot of seam work to do, so I'm just making sure I get a really good um, bond between the parts. So I'm just taking, like uh, for instance, the arm part here, I'm going to take my glue and uh, I'm going to give it a nice solid bead all the way around uh, every part of it. I'm not too worried about um, any kind of seeping out because I want a really solid bond. That will minimize the amount of uh, gap filling we'll have to do as long as we get a solid bond in there. As you can tell there's going to be some gaps but we're going to put a solid bond on there and then we're going to kind of clip it together as I've done with this one arm and uh, that will minimize a lot of our seam work that we'll have to do. We'll still have to do some but that will uh, definitely help. So nice uh, amount of glue. Uh, wipe off any excess with a towel or something if it seeps out and uh, we'll just keep going with that. Okay, just working on assembly here. Uh, a lot of sanding, uh, using all different types of things, using some files, sanding paper, sanding sticks, uh, my knife to trim off some of the edges. Uh, in this tail here, this was two parts. You can see where I've started um, sanding all this down. And uh, I had a good glue line, so uh, fortunately I was able just to kind of sand it down. Now on this other side, the seam was right down the middle of uh, this little spiny area right here. And so it was a little tricky kind of getting in between, so I just took some uh, sandpaper and worked it in and did it that way to kind of clean out within those. On the top, I could just kind of sand the top and smooth those out. Also, in some of the gaps and areas, there's uh, I had some uh, pretty uh, noticeable gaps around the um, elbow area right here. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of filled in, and I used a mixture. Uh, this is this some um, modeling cement mixed in with some styrene or some styrene put into this like a container now when it's, it was about a third full or maybe a quarter full and then I just put in a bunch of strips of uh, leftover styrene and it melts it down and makes like a uh, goopy type uh, mixture but it's really good to fill in gaps and then it becomes it since it's styrene it becomes styrene and you can sand it down it's really good especially for a uh, project like this where it's kind of an organic look and it really uh, just kind of blends over. Uh, over here you can see there was a gap right in the middle of, you can still kind of see it, uh, the line, but I just put a little drop of that mixture in there and let it kind of set naturally. Now i got a pretty nicely rounded off area to kind of cover up that seam line there. So just doing those uh, things on the different parts of them. On his head here, even though he'll have um, a cover of this, it's transparent. Um, I worked on, and I'm still working on uh, getting this seam done all the way through. I had a little bit of a gap on his chin that I put some of that mixture in, and it's in the process of drying. Uh, his mouth does open and close. Now, in the instructions, it says you put knobs on, and when you join the two halves, you his arms are movable. I probably will not do that. I'll probably just uh, join the parts of the body together and then glue these on separately. Now I think the head has to go on because of the way it's designed. Um, I think it kind of goes in there, something like that, and it has a little bit of uh, 
mobility to it, but we'll still probably glue his head into position. It's not the best pose. Uh, kind of looks like he's uh, taking a squat here and everything, but is what it is. So we're just doing our best to uh, clean up all these lines. Obviously, when we join these two halves of the body together, we're going to have pretty significant seam line that we're going to have to work all throughout. All right, so after many hours of working on seams, here's where we're at. I uh, pretty much have just uh, thrown the kitchen sink at it. I've used files, sanding sticks, uh, different uh, levels of sanding paper, uh, different types of filler, uh, glazing putty, regular uh, modeling putty from different brands. I use my filler mixture that I've made. That's this uh, styrene plastic uh, melted in with some plastic cement. Uh, this actually works pretty well on a lot of it, especially on um, these type of models that are organic and have round curves. You can kind of uh, fill it in and let it kind of run its course and then you'll get a natural, it kind of naturally follows the contours of the body. I did that a lot back in uh, the back here, but all throughout the model we had some uh, a seam line that ran all the way down in between his uh, inner legs, up the sides. Of course the head was two pieces in here, even his little secondary mouth had some seam lines. So I, I have it pretty well. Uh, again, uh, there was some filler in here. I even used super glue to kind of fill in one of the cracks on one side of the seam line here. I used super glue to fill it in and then sanded it down. Now I'm about ready to prime over this part of it. That's going to expose any imperfections. I can come back and touch up uh, any areas that we have to do there. So just a lot of work, um, but it's coming together. Uh, again, I wish I had a better pose. The pose is kind of, uh, even with the arms and uh, the tail attached, it's not very fierce, but it is what it is. Other than that, it has nice detail. So we're just gonna keep moving forward with it. All right, here's the tail of our alien. And as you can see, the tip of it is kind of not very intimidating. Uh, in some of the movies, it has a much more pronounced spear-like tip to its tail so I've taken several parts of some cheap styrene and glued them together with some plastic cement so it's all welded together and made uh, kind of a block as you can see I've uh, penciled in a little more pronounced uh, more menacing tip to put on there I'm just going to use my belt sander kind of ground it down then I'll use my files and hopefully I can get it into uh, you know more menacing shape so we'll see how that turns out all right, I've attached his tail, and as you can see, I've replaced the uh, tip of his tail here. Uh, this was the original part, so you can see how I think that was a, a huge improvement over it. I think that uh, added uh, more aggressive looking spear like tail uh, actually makes him look a little bit meaner, so I think that turned out pretty well. And I just kind of sanded that down, used my files and sanding paper to kind of get it to that uh, shape right there. So he's all ready to be primed. We're going to prime over his body. I'm going to leave the arms off. We'll uh, attach the arms once he's all completely painted. Uh, that way we can get in to areas underneath his arms and be able to paint that. Um, when we attach his arms, it's going to be a, just a natural line anyway, so it won't be a big deal. And uh, Anyway, so we're going to put a coat of primer that's going to bring out any imperfections and see if we need to address any seams or miss. Uh, places that we did once we were uh, filling in all those gaps. All right, here we have the head, the top of the head of our alien, and as you can see, it's a clear piece. Now I'm going to tint this down, so I'm going to mask uh, the outside of it, the part that will be uh, showing, and we're going to tint the inside, and I'm just going to use this uh, transparent black uh, paint window tint, and this is from Model Master and you just do it in very light coats and build up on it. Now I don't want it too dark, but I do want to darken a little bit because uh, you know we have that structure of the head that there's a lot of detail, so I want that to, you know people to be able to see that. And so, but I do want to tint this down just a little bit. So I'm gonna mask this part off and then we'll spray the tint inside of this. All right, we have them all primed. I think it seems they're all taken care of uh, pretty good and uh, ready to just start putting on our base coat and for our base coat i'm just going to use uh, Crayolon's uh, gloss black uh, i've used this before and it works pretty well so i'm going to just do his whole body and his arms uh, and his gloss black so we'll come back once we get that base coat on all right as you can see i have my base uh, gloss black coat on there from Crylon. 
uh, looks really nice this is the way it is but we're going to bring out the detail by doing a lot of dry brushing now I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did with this arm Let's see if that comes out on camera and I just I've done two different types of dry brushing on here I do two different colors not two different types two different colors I first did with this this uh, metallic craft paint uh, this uh, purple is uh, galvanized tin and uh, I did a uh, just some dry brushing on there just put a little bit on your paintbrush I get almost all of it off to have it in some uh, cloth or paper towels or something and you just uh, rub it over to catch all those raised edges and I did that all, all over uh, the arm here and then I went back over with a second coat and this time I used Vallejo steel which is a bit brighter and a little bit lighter I didn't go as deep with my dry brushing just barely touching the edges uh, catching the very tips of all these raised edges here to kind of give you a couple layers um, of color going on here now I've seen people do different types of colors with uh, like blues and browns and things of that nature I wanted to go with that more metallic look and that's why I've chosen to do uh, these kind of silver base colors and, and I think it really you know, brings out that nice look it still kind of has that overall black look that you see in the original aliens movies and uh, but has that detail that the silver helps bring out so I'm going to be doing that over the entire model and uh, we're getting close to having it put together here all right well here we are with our finished AMT hurdle alien uh, now I finished up with some dry brushing and the last part I did uh, just some silver a couple of silvers I ended up doing most of the silver dry brushing uh, with this Vallejo steel and I just did that over the whole body now as you may notice it does have a bit of a blue tint and I took some of this Vallejo I decided to do some contrast because uh, when I did the silver it looked pretty good but my base here is kind of silver and black and it kind of blended in with the uh, display base that I made it so I decided to give them some contrast and uh, I'm glad I did because I took some of this Vallejo uh, blue this electric blue and I mixed it in uh, with the steel which helped kind of give it more of a metallic blue kind of color and then I dry brushed that uh, most uh, throughout most of the body here and it really kind of um, added on to the effect I'm really pleased I'm really glad that it wasn't my initial um, uh, intent to do that but I'm glad I did because I think that little bit of blue mixed in just uh, really kind of brings all his detail out even further like I said it didn't look too bad with just the silvers on it uh, but I'm really glad I did the blue and uh, I left the head uh, this is not glued down this part fits nicely this clear part and I just did a couple of light coats of the transparent black that window tint uh, paint uh, I believe from I believe it was model masters and that will fit over there and that just makes for really nice detail now I didn't do the blue on this part right here that's still just the silvers and I think that turned out really cool uh, one of the nice things about the model is once you do get together and address all the seams which that is a lot of work it does turn out to be a fairly nice looking uh, display once you get it painted right uh, I left this silver we didn't put any blue on there so when you put this on it actually kind of has a blue tint to it even though it's not blue so I'm not sure uh, exactly what's going on there but it does have a really nice look I'm glad that I uh, kind of detailed out the eyes a little bit more so they would show through I left all that black I'm glad that we uh, I made that minor adjustment on that tail I think that really adds so I've seen some other models done with that where the, that didn't change and this was really over underwhelming so adding on making that just a tad bit bigger well actually it's probably twice as big but still it's not huge we didn't overdo it and I'm really glad with it when I took the time to add on that little bit of detail and everything uh, once we're done again it turns out really nice there is a lot of work uh, filling the seams and gaps that it, it took many hours uh, a lot of different techniques to get all those seams uh, filled in so that is a lot of work I'm sure there's much better models as far as that but the work paid off I think it's a very nice display and I'm very happy with it so I hope you've enjoyed the video until next time everybody have a good one